Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is my Hungry Bin Worm Composter. I've been using this for about five months. I'm going to go over all the tips, instructions that you need to set this up. I highly recommend it. Over the last year I tried different systems. I settled on this because it's one, super easy to put together. I'm not even going to go over that. The instructions are simple. It's a tapered container and it's kind of a continuous flow. You put the food scraps up there. There are some of them there. I'll show you how I do that. And over a four to six month period, they work the way down as worm compost and you can just pull it out by unclipping the bottom and you get a nice brick of worm compost. Once this has been set up and going for four or five months, about every six weeks to eight weeks, you'll get a nice brick of worm compost um, that you can use in your garden, wherever you want to use it. But what I like is that it just becomes kind of this ongoing system where you just drop food at the top, you wait, you harvest it out from the bottom, and you just keep the process going. So all of my food scraps are, even, are either going out to composting or they're going into the Hungry Bins container. Now, we use red wigglers. You want about 2,000 of them when you set this up. And the reason you use red wigglers is because they don't burrow down to the bottom and set up shop. They feed and set up on the top. So they're always eating the new uh, vegetable waste and organic matter that you put in there. And that's where they do their thing. And that's the whole, the, the whole idea is you're continually putting in the scraps up top. They process it and you pull out the worm castings from the bottom. And castings are just wonderful. They have uh, enzymes, all kinds of microbiology, micronutrients, macronutrients, everything that your plant wants. Now, before we get into the bin and talk about the setup for the bedding, that is the liquid it just drips out of there. That's about four weeks worth. I was away so it kind of filled up. It has no odor. There's nothing living on it. It's pH neutral. It's packed with everything your plants want. And the way I use it is I just scoop it out and then I mix it to a one-to-one -one ratio with water and put it in a uh, watering can. I water my plant leaves. I water the root system. I use it primarily for my container plants. And you're going to get it's humid here in Maryland, so I'm getting almost maybe a half a gallon a week or more, um, but you're going to get something around there. And then it's just, it's amazing because it, it really, I wish you could smell it. There is no odor. I mean, you could, you, you look at it and you're going to think that it's actually tea. It just has everything your plants want. I mean, it has all the nutrients, the macronutrients, the micronutrients, growth hormones come out of worms, um, all kinds of beneficial things. And... If you're buying worm tea or you're buying worm concentrate or you're trying to buy castings, it can be very expensive. Now this system is not cheap. I sell it at my seed shop, I'll put the link down there. But once you have it established, it's going to pay for itself 20 fold. It's just, it's that good. I love this system. Now, how do you set it up? The setup to put it together is real easy. I'm not even gonna go over that. The instructions are simple. It's designed really well. You don't have to shift layers around. You just start this way. You're going to fill, and this has been going, you can see some of the worms crawling around. Now this has been going four or five months. So you're filling this about three quarters of the way to here, right about up to here, with compost or leaf grow. That's what I recommend because I think the worms still eat and digest that, and I think it speeds up a little bit the process of getting the castings down there. I mean, you could use peat moss, Cocoa core, potting mix, people use shredded newspaper. I, I, if you can, just go with a leaf grow or a compost product. Now, you want to make sure, this is the biggest thing, is you don't want to bake your worms. This is on the side of my house that gets no sunlight. You want this to be in the shade. On 90 degree days, you know, this gets warm, it gets humid, the worms are fine. But if the sun was beating down on this, you're going to kill off your worms. So that's one thing you don't hear a lot is where to place it. So you want to place this in the shade. If you're in a place that gets freezing temperatures like I do, this is going to be rolled out. It has wheels and it's going to be put into my basement, which stays about 40 degrees. And the worms will just kind of overwinter there. I'll feed them less. So 
you can see that this has already dropped down from here to here and that's because I'm still getting used to the how much to feed them and stuff like that so you and there's no odor here either that's what I find really impressive these worms do a great job of taking care of things you want to give them fresh food you want to give them enough that they can eat it before it rots and smells and basically you just start with less when you first get started and with time you can see smaller worms in there too let's see if I can get those in they're going to match the amount of food that you put in there which means you know if you put in a lot eventually they're going to catch up and they're going to eat it all if you put in less they're going to slow down reproduction and they're going to match the food so just kind of go slow and steady learn a little bit about it when your system is up and going full speed these guys can eat uh, really anywhere from two to four pounds of food you know over a short period of time I can't remember if it's exactly a day or so but it's almost like that they can really process this food quickly now if we dig up a little bit in here you can see the worms different sizes this again has zero odor and that's what you're looking for is you want to keep the food flow matching the worm consumption so that you don't get rotting food in here I'm actually going to add in a little bit more leaf grow build this back up when you're putting in scraps you can use anything cut them up thin you know if you've got time but they will eat that anyway like they'll eat through this uh, within the next I don't know 12 hours they just love the inside of cucumbers and squash I just set it down in a container nothing fancy and I spread it out now you could put a burlap cloth across the top of here kind of keep the moisture in they kind of do better that way from what I read but I haven't been doing that I just drop it in like this so some of the things that I learned that is really important is one keep it in the shade two you're gonna to have to figure out the pace of the food so just keep an eye on it and you're gonna see the worms digesting and eating it down and I have to add in more to kind of match how my kind of worms exploded over the last um, month or so they're just digesting everything really quickly so I got to add in the amount of food that I'm putting in there to keep the level up the reason you want to do that is because you're bringing in the organic matter that's fresh right here the worms live in this space they digest it break it down you know and every couple of months the worm castings work the way down here and you can kind of just pull out a brick of worm casting so if I let this kind of get down low I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot because I'm not really maximizing everything that's going on in here so I hope that makes sense the drippings start coming out about two months into the whole process um, and you you really I think if you garden regularly you're sticking with organic gardening you have containers you use uh, vermicompost, you use worm compost, you use worm comp uh, castings. You really want to get a system like this. Again, I sell it at my seed shop. If this is a system that's not for you, you know, check out the other worm composters. But I like this tapered method and I like that I don't have to move different shelves or layers around. I just put it in the top, take care of it, care of it at the bottom. So again, this is the Hungry Bins. This has been going for about four or five months in this fully shaded area. And I've been feeding my plants regularly with the uh, liquid gold that comes out of there. And within the next week or so, I'm going to be taking out my first brick of worm castings. And now that these worms are really up and going, I'm going to be upping the amount of organic matter that I put in there. I recommend the Hungry Bins Worm Composter because it's just the simplest, in a good way, design that I found where I can just drop in the materials and harvest what I want from the bottom. That's what I want. I want to do less work. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And I also have a book coming out uh, in February of 2021 if you want to check that link out and pre-order. Again, worm composting is a great way to really process the scraps from your kitchen. And you really, really do get rewarded with literally gallons of the worm casting liquid and you'll get worm castings pretty regularly after this has been going for about four or five months. Thanks for watching.